in this draft after 22 balances out pretty nicely. Uh, the difference between pick 23 and potentially 33 are all in the same box. So if, if, if the draft board shakes out in a particular way, this is my ideal dream scenario. Gentlemen, uh, some draft news. We teased it off the top. Some uh, stuff that you might not have heard yet. I'm going to hand it over to Gerald. Gerald, what are you hearing about the Suns and tomorrow's draft? Yeah, so some things that have already been out there, some things that you might not have heard yet. But um, according to a source, Phoenix does like Virginia's Ryan Dunn, uh, Marquette's Tyler Kolek, and Baylor's Eve Massey in terms of potential targets at number 22. Um, Dunn in particular, I've been hearing has been impressing a lot of teams through the pre-draft process, um, especially on the offensive end. We know he's a defensive terror, but um, I've been hearing that the shot has been looking good in those workouts as well. Can only put so much stock in yeah. pre-draft workouts, that type of thing, but still worth mentioning. Um, but we should also note that the Suns are not locked in on anybody at number 22. And I'm hearing that it's most likely that they trade back. So mm -hmm. they do have those three guys that they like at 22 and probably a couple others. They have multiple players that they like just as much, potentially even more, that they feel could be available if they trade back in order to attain another draft asset. So do not be surprised if someone that you like is on the board at 22 and then we get the news that the Suns are trading back to add another second round draft pick. Um, Utah has been mentioned as a sensible trade down target. We covered that in a newsletter a few weeks ago because they do have a top 10 pick at number 10, but they also have number 29 and number 32. So if you're the Suns and Utah has someone that they really like at 22, maybe you can trade back, get 29 and 32. Maybe you flip one of those two picks into additional second rounders that you can then trade either in this year's draft or a future draft. Um, Walker Kessler is not a part of those talks with Utah. Um, the Jazz still like him, even though I think it was uh, Jake Fisher that reported recently that they're you know open to trading him, that he wouldn't be part of those talks. Um, and trading up doesn't seem likely for this team. I know we had talked about the possibility of trading up. Devin Carter is a guy that I really like, but there aren't a ton of prospects that leap out at the Suns like, yes, we need to trade up for this guy and give up a future asset so that he can be part of our rotation now. So those are just some things that I'm hearing heading into draft night. The Suns are taking a wait and see approach to number 22, see who's available on the board, see what teams are calling and what they might be willing to offer in terms of trading back. Uh, but it does sound like they have other candidates that they would be willing to move back for if it gets them another asset or two. Does, does the approach make sense, though? Because... <laughs> I understand wanting to accumulate assets. I know there's some targets on the board. Mm -hmm. Nick's included of 24, 25, and 38. Could be mm -hmm. a, a kind of a, a group that could be looked at. But, Flex, you're kind of the guy that's been looking uh, deep into into that second round. Is, is there enough talent in this draft where it would make sense to move down from 22? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is such a strange NBA draft. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing, and don't take this, this is not because the Suns have the 22nd pick. Mm -hmm. we, we literally <laughs> talked about this. Um, I think the difference in this draft after 22 balances out pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference between pick 23 and potentially 33 are all in the same box. So yeah. if 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 the draft board shakes out in a particular way, this is my ideal dream scenario. Mm. The Suns are sitting at the clock on the clock at 22. And someone that's supposed to go higher in this draft suddenly is available at 22. Mm. And maybe you have a bidding war. Maybe you have two, three teams. Maybe you have the Knicks calling. Maybe you have uh Utah calling. Maybe mm. you have Minnesota calling. Mm. You know, and, and they're sitting here saying, hey, we really want this guy. And the Suns are sitting here doing exactly what Gerald said. There's guys they like, but there's that guys that they feel are equal to or even better a little bit later. Mm. And so, yeah, you pounce all over that. You mm. pounce all over that because you don't have the assets right now. And if you can accumulate assets and in a dream scenario, do exactly what Gerald just said. Mm. Get two picks, maybe flip that second pick for maybe two second rounders. And, and now you get a good tap of this whole draft. Maybe you get a first round pick. Maybe you get a high second round pick. Mm. And maybe you swing for the fences later on in this draft. Because this draft to me is a sleeper draft. This is a draft I think the best players in this draft 
may come out later r- rather than sooner. And we've seen some drafts like this. 